Even as COVID cases rise, testing numbers have dropped. Jersey's daily tests went from a high of more than 130,000 in late December to under 50,000 a day at present. And the lack of testing isn't the sole issue. It's also the number of people who are testing at home and not reporting their results to health agencies. This comes as DOH is set to distribute another half a million of these tests. For now, experts warn the numbers only show a fraction of COVID spread around the state. Senior correspondent Brenda Flanagan reports. At the end of April, I woke up symptomatic um, and decided to take an at-home test before going to work. Fourth grade teacher Gina White says she tested positive for COVID and quarantined for five days. The Hawthorne resident, who's vaccinated and boosted, didn't confirm the diagnosis with a more accurate PCR test. I called my physician who suggested that the at-home kit was, the at-home test was enough. Um, and that going for a PCR would just sort of further expose other people. White says most folks she knows opt for home antigen tests over clinic administered PCRs. They're not as difficult to get your hands on at this point. Um, there you get your test results right away. I mean, I feel like that's probably the number one reason. Now that most people's insurance will actually pay for it. It's just easy to have it at home. Pharmacist Brian Pinto says far fewer customers want COVID PCR tests at his stores. They're trending down across New Jersey, too, from almost 138,000 tests recorded on a single late December day during the winter Omicron surge to about 48,000 this Monday. But without more robust PCR testing, it's tougher to keep track of COVID because home test results usually don't get reported to state health officials. Most of the numbers that you get at the state level are typically either the ones that are reported through labs or the ones that are admitted, you know, where, where somebody goes into the emergency room and, and they, uh, you know, and, and the hospital is testing them there. So, so the numbers that are coming back, I think, are grossly underreported. There's a lot of community spread, and I think anecdotally, a lot of us are hearing it. I think that there are people who may be spreading this asymptomatically because they've been exposed. We're not doing routine testing in most places, so they don't even know they have it. Montclair epidemiologist Stephanie Silvera points out New Jersey reports COVID cases trending up slowly. They topped 5,000 today, but how accurately does that reflect reality? I would say that whatever the numbers say they are, multiply that by, I would say, 10 based on the wastewater data that's coming out. Public health officials now rely on wastewater tests that check for viral genetic material. Columbia University monitors plants treating about half of what Bergen County flushes. And because everybody goes, the numbers give a pretty good snapshot of COVID's presence. And they're trending up, says researcher Kartik Chandran. We've seen a, an increase in the concentrations uh, by more than a factor of 10 since about late February, early March through, through last week. A higher proportion of the population in Bergen County is infected with COVID-19. We are not sending anybody to the hospitals. Dr. Rebecca Varghese's Bergen County Clinic's doing 70 to 80 COVID tests a day, down by half from the Omicron surge. But when a patient tests positive at home... Whoever is testing positive are being treated uh, at homes because we call them, make sure they are okay. At the same time, newer medications has come, which helps them with, you know, preventing them from going into the hospitals. COVID hospitalizations in New Jersey remain in the low 700s. More than 6.7 million residents are fully vaccinated. But Rutgers Dean Perry Halkita says the virus is not done, even though folks are distracted. Between inflation and the war in Ukraine and, all of, and, and abortion rights being chipped away in our country, I think people have lost sight of COVID-19 and are actually not keeping up with the science. It is my expectation that next fall, all of us will require an update to our vaccination. And I wish somebody would just say that. I'm Brenda Flanagan, NJ Spotlight News.